Now it ain't a long way home, a long way home, no. Stars and moon, can you hear me calling? Just shouting out loud, spinning out in the great unknown. You got me way up high and my brain no falling Zero gravity with you here and I won't let go I've been running a mile just to find my feet Just finding a place where my heart can breathe And all I know is holding you close now you're here with me Now it ain't a long way home Lost to sea, ain't no hope of rescue Floating out here, set adrift on the big white blue I don't need no key if I'm right here with you Now, I don't wanna get found as long as I'm lost with you 
I've been running a mile just to find my feet Just finding a place where my heart can breathe And all I know is there ain't no place that I'd rather be Now it ain't a long way home, a long way home I don't feel this is right I don't know, should we let go? Diving into your mind Just to overflow Are you feeling the signs? Feel the cold in your bones Looking up to the sky To see a silver sun I can't be the only one who I Feels this way I can't be the only one who's Slowly falling I can't be the only one who always Feels this way I can't be the only one who's Slowly falling off
Check, check. Huh. <clears throat> Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Michael Buffington. We are back with another live drawing stream, and we're calling this Hella Drawing. So um, I'm so glad that you guys can join me. Sorry I'm a little late. It's finals this week, so we went a little long, but I am here, and because I'm a little late, I still wanna give you guys a two-hour stream. So we're gonna go to about 5.30 today. Now, over the last couple of weeks, uh, you saw me go from literally from scratch. I just did a little head drawing. I drew the body, and then I cleaned it up this past week, and I began to land some flat color. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to walk back. We're going to do a little backtrack. I'm going to walk back to the beginning of the drawing, and then I'm going to... Um, go back in, lay in the flats, the rest of the flats, and then also we're going to uh, finish up that drawing and maybe even render a little bit. So we'll see where we go. If not, maybe we'll start a new drawing. So, I mean, it's called Hella Drawing, so we'll see, right? Well, maybe we'll just do Hella Drawing. So let's see where we go. Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. If you guys ever have any special requests or any ideas or anything specific that you guys would like to see me draw, just drop something in the comments section and let me know, and we'll go from there. All right, so let's pick it up where we left off. Okay, so let's do a little backtrack, right? So if we go back to the beginning, I'm going to take it all the way back to the sketch. So here's what I started with. I started just sketching a little bit, uh, a little head here. Um, I, I really didn't know where I was going with this. I just wanted to do something fun. I didn't know if I was going to sketch a, a full character or a whole body or just a bunch of heads. I was just drawing at this point and just kind of asking you guys for feedback. And I was just kind of winging it, to be honest. Um, but I started with the head. And then after I did the head, I did a sketch for the whole body. And I said, you know what? Let me turn this into like... Um, uh, a really cool, like, sort of sci-fi mech warrior type of character. And so I went in, and what I did first was I laid in the body. So as you can see, um, after I got the head down, the first thing I did was laid in, like, the nude body here. And the reason why I do that is because when you are drawing the figure... Um, or, or a character, and that character has clothing on it, you always want to make sure that you understand what is going on underneath the clothing. And that's really, really important, because if you don't understand what's going on underneath the clothing, and you start trying to clothe the character, especially if the clothing is not fitted, if it's like cloaks and capes and, you know, um, cowls and things like that, it's going to be really hard understanding how this hangs on the body and how it interacts with the body. So I really like to get down the overall figure before I go any further. So I got my head down, uh, which was that, and then I started drawing the figure. And after that, I went in and I began to, once I had the figure down, and not until, I began to add some details. Now here, I'm, here on this layer, um, which you see um, here, right, that's that layer here, um, you see me figuring out exactly what the costume details look like. Um, here I have, you know, like I had thought, hey, I'm going to do a little bow here, and I put a little quiver in the back, and I gave him some shoulder pads, and a bunch of other things were happening. So I got all this stuff down, and, um, and then I decided that this is kind of the direction that I wanted to go. So once I got this down, then I went ahead and I started doing the cleanup. Now, the biggest thing that you have to remember is that um, you don't want to start um, cleaning up before you figured everything out. See, here are my notes, and here's all the information that I need for the character, for um, what's happening in the costume, for what the body type is like, and all that. Now, after that, I go in and I clean up, and I'm really not trying to figure out a whole lot. It's all about the execution. At, at, that, at that point, when I'm laying in 
the clean line. I just want to make sure that it looks good and that it's clean and that it's solid and that it feels three dimensional. But in terms of what's there, I want to try and have most of that figured out in this stage. Now I made a couple of changes, that's true, because when, I, when I'm doing something like this, you want to make a couple of changes here and there as you go and you say, hey, you know what, this might be better. Obviously I changed the bow, I changed the necklace that was hanging around his neck, um, and I tweaked that a little bit. And so that's kind of what I did here. And then, as you can see, I began to clean the drawing up. and. I first started working on the torso and the upper body, and then I started adding different elements. Um, I changed the bow into a gun, I changed this staff here, and eventually what I did was I came to this clean line drawing here. So you can see now I, I basically cleaned up everything, right? So I cleaned up. Um, you know, the face here, the necklace, I added this cool skull. Somebody, somebody gave me that idea in the chat. Um, I, he had to have a braid, so I made sure to put that in there. Um, I cleaned up uh, his bag and all these things. I added his gun and this, these sort of growing protectors here. Um, I tweaked this staff and gave him like some sort of, you know, mystical, magical gem thing, or, or maybe it's powered by science, who knows. Um, but I gave him that. And, um, and I decided, you know, we're in the future, so it would only be fitting that he had a robotic arm or some sort of robotic body part. And so that's exactly what, he did, what I did here, was I gave him a robotic arm and hand, because why not, right? So then from there, I went ahead and I cleaned up the legs and the pants and the boots, and then I have myself a clean line drawing, which is what you're seeing here. So as you can see, I really started this um, without much of an idea. I just kind of had a, a, um, a head drawing. I added the figure on top of that, and as I was going, I was getting inspired by what was happening, and I was saying, hey, maybe this is a futuristic, post-apocalyptic sci-fi warrior. And so then I took that prompt that I created for myself, and I used that to design the elements of what you're seeing here. And then I added, and I added, and I added until I had the overall look of the character, and then I went back and I cleaned that character up. Now, um, one of the things that you want to remember is when you're designing, um, you don't want to quite design in that way. This is, I mean, we're just having fun here, right? This is called hella drawing. So we're just having fun, we're playing around, and we're just having a good time. But when you're designing in the industry, story drives design. So you want to make sure that you have a really good design brief and that you have a really solid idea already set prior to uh, really beginning your design. Because what you have to remember is this. A good drawing is not necessarily a good design unless that design co uh, coincides with the story um, of that particular asset. So you have to understand what's the story of this asset, where are we going with this, uh, what's the intention, um, what's the energy of the character, what's the, what's the personality like, because all those things will drive design. When you're a designer, you have basically four tools that you're working with. Line, shape, color, and value. So with those four tools, you have to solve a problem because as a concept artist, you are a professional visual problem solver. You're a professional visual problem solver. So you have to take those four tools, line, shape, color, and value, and you have to put them together in such a way that they communicate a story about the character that you are designing. And so that's kind of what we did here, you know. I kind of um, created a little story as I went. And, you know, in the beginning, like I said, um, it wasn't, uh, there wasn't any sort of intent. You know, maybe next time I'll come back with a full story for this particular character that I'm going to design coming up. Um, but here we just kind of, you know, played it by ear and figured it out as we went. But, that's, but, in, but when you're designing for concept art, you really want to make sure that you have a story figured out all in the beginning. So let's get back to our drawing over here. So after I did this, then I went in and I began 
to add um, some of these designs here, okay? So, here's my clean line, and then I begin to add in some flats. Um, now, as you can see, um, the color, even the color that I'm laying down is very deliberate. All of the colors in the, um, you know, the armor and the clothing and things like that are very muted and very uh, low saturation. And that's by design because I don't want these things to overpower my focal point, which is going to be my head. Um, but here, I've got the red and the blue and the turquoise face paint and the, you know, any, anywhere where I can splash some color, I've splashed some color. And the reason why is because it brings the face right up here because there's no other colors like this in the entire um, figure, so far at least. And it creates sort of like an accent, right? And not only that, not only that, but when you put, when you juxtapose this color right on top of this brown skin, it creates contrast. Right? So the contrast that's created also creates a focal point. So there's a, there's a method to the madness and there's a reason why I did this and I'm trying to keep the eye right up here in this area. But I have to move on because I have to finish this thing up. So let's figure it out. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move down here. I'm gonna add some, some new layers, okay? Um, Let's see, let's go in here and add something in the pants. What color are we gonna do? We wanna keep it low saturation. Um, I'm not exactly sure how low, but we'll figure it out. Let's, I'll, maybe I'll go a little bit darker than, than what's going on here in the metal. Let's see how that looks. So again, the way that I feel is I grab, everybody has a different way of feeling um, their color. <clears throat> And whatever way works for you, works for you. But this is what I like to do because it's quick and dirty. Um, I love to grab the magic wand and just make a quick selection. Now, remember, if you guys remember what I told you last time, the key to this is making sure that you get these pixels underneath the line. Because what happens is, is when you make a selection like that, the pixels will leave like a one pixel space um, in between the, the color that you're about to lay down and the line. So what you do is you go to select, modify, expand, and expand it by two pixels because that'll get it right up to the line and then one pixel underneath the line. And you're going to watch the selection expand right now. Boom. Just like that. So now I have the selection right where I want it to be, underneath that line, instead of right next to it. And so you're getting, uh, you're gonna get a nice flat that's gonna go completely under the line. And anywhere it does it, any little um, hole in the selection, you can go back and fill that in manually, which we'll do. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna save this. So I'm gonna go save selection. I'm gonna say pants. And then I'm gonna hit Shift F5 and uh, click foreground color and boom. And no, I didn't want to fill it on that. I wanted to fill it on this layer. You want to fill it underneath the line, right? So you don't lose your line. I can hide that by hitting control H and I can check out and see whether or not. Okay, so that looks, that actually looks pretty good. Um, nice and balanced because I basically took this color off of the metal and just darkened it. And I can go in and tweak that later if I want. So I'm gonna drop that selection by hitting Control D, go to my brush, and then I'm gonna fill in where I see some holes in that selection. I should have snagged that in there, but. Okay. Now everywhere else looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and um, fill in these shoes now. What color should I make the shoes? Do I wanna make them like a black color? I don't know. Let's see, let's see. You know, maybe these shoes need to be multiple colors. How about that, huh? Maybe this top part with 
all the different pieces can be one color and this front part can be another color. Ah, that's not a bad idea. Let's see. We're going to we're going to expand that selection by 2 pixels. And I'm thinking for a minute. Help me out in the chat, guys. What do you guys think? Hmm. I think that we need to add some pink. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let's try some, uh, let's actually try something closer to black. Let's see how that looks. That's actually not a bad look. Not a bad look at all. Okay, let's drop that selection. Let's go in and manually fill. What I'm missing. Yes. That looks great. Right? And it's not it's not overpowering the design again. I want to keep the saturation level pretty low. Um, I'm going to grab these pants. Uh, I'm going to grab that color. I'm going to darken it just a smidge and I'm going to again select 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 Okay, and then I'm going to expand that selection and Shift F5. Oops, that's right. I always got to remember to keep that on a separate layer. Shift F5, boom. There you go. Like the two tone color, that is feeling really good. And getting in there and catching some of those missing areas that I want to catch. Okay, we are in business. All right, so now what are we going to do about this glove? You know, I think I will balance this design out by making this glove the same color as, as this cloth in here. So let's go back, let's go to my clean line, let's grab this glove. Modify, expand, let's go two pixels. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. So let's drop that in there, shift F5. That looks great. You see, you see how that balances with the design? I've got boom, 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 right? It's creating a little bit of balance right there. And overall, everything's kind of muted. I, I actually like that a lot. Cool. Okay, so that's looking really good. Um, all right, here we go. So we're going to color in this... Um, this growing protection is what we'll call it. Uh, these metal armor plates down here. Grab my magic wand, select, select. See if I can sneak in there and grab that. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom in and see if it might be possible. There we go. Yeah, see sometimes you need to just, you know, if you're, if you're far away, it's hard to zero in. But if you zoom in, you can grab certain things that you couldn't grab. Okay, so that's looking good. All right, so now that I've got that selected, I'm going to go back again. You know, it might seem a little redundant and a little bit tedious, but um, this, is how you, this is how you get things um, working really well. So in terms of the metal, I'm going to go back to... You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to go back to um, this metal color, but I'm going to actually push it into the green. So it feels like a greenish metal color. And I'm going to fill that. Oh, there's a lot of holes in that one. But let's clean it up.
And if you're curious about what I'm working on, I am working in Adobe Photoshop. And I, I'm just using um, just stock brushes right now because I haven't really started painting or anything like that. Um, stock brushes are not bad. I mean, before they used to be terrible, but now they're actually not bad. So I'm just using those stock brushes to go in. I did all my drawing with the stock brush and I'm just feeling, I haven't really started painting painting yet, but we're moving along. Okay, so that actually looks, that looks pretty good. I think I might want to darken that just a little bit. So let's see. Let's see if I bring that up. Yeah, if I bring that a little darker, that'll lessen the contrast. And that's what I want. I don't want too much attention called to this area. Okay, so let's get the gun in there. You know, I should probably label that. Growing, growing plate. This is glove, shoe two, and shoe one, and then these are the pants. See, now we're styling, we're in business. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our clean line, and now we're gonna fill and start filling in some of this other metal. So we're gonna go to this gun right here, and Oh my. Okay, here we go. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and expand that by two pixels. Modify, expand, two pixels. Go here, I'm gonna create a layer called gun and I'm going to shift F5 so I can fill that ooh that is not the color that I wanted to fill that so I'm gonna go into my hue saturation palette you can bring that up by hitting control U and let's let's sit back and see let's let's hide those hide that selection all right so control U and we're just gonna slide this. That, this is one of the beauties again about you know doing things digitally is uh, when you're especially when you're coloring, this makes life so much easier. Hmm, that looks kind of cool. Let me desaturate that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Cool, I have a cool color down here. Everything's pretty warm so far down here. I don't know if that's um, gonna bring too much attention to that area, but I don't think so. Um, let's, let's warm it up just a little bit. Okay, so I've warmed that up just a little bit. We are working um, on filling in the rest of this drawing. And we're gonna drop those that selection so I can go in and fill the ho holes in. All righty. And, uh, you know, why don't I just fill that in here while I'm at it? Okay, that looks pretty cool. Now, I wonder if I, if I take this staff and I fill it in with that same metal, I wonder what that'll look like. Let's try it. Because, I mean, again, if it doesn't work out, I just go to my um, hue saturation palette and I tweak it and change the color. Okay. 
All right, so let's expand that. All right, how does that look? Let's hide that selection. That actually doesn't look bad. Okay, that doesn't look bad at all. Oh, we're in business, guys. Okay, let's drop that selection, control D. Let's go back to my brush. I tell you guys, learning keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop is so very helpful. Um, if you haven't memorized like little keyboard shortcuts like that, I highly recommend that you do because it really just speeds up your workflow and you get to the point where you're not even thinking about it too much. You're just, you're just here pressing buttons because you intuitively know what buttons you have to hit to accomplish whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. So really important that you guys um, learn these keyboard shortcuts so that it speeds up your workflow. And that's what you always want to do, right? You always want to um, you always want to try and speed up your workflow any way you can because in the industry, speed is king and time is money. So you always want to find ways to be faster and to save time. Okay. All right, let's go back to that cloth. How about I put that on the same layer as the glove? Uh, okay, that works. Okay. Just doing a little fill here. Where is the layer with the metal on it? Let's find that. It's going to be one of the ones I didn't label. Of course, that's how it always works, right? Of course, it's going to be everyone but the one that I... <laughs> oh, I see. I put... Ah, I see what I was doing. See, that's what happens when you're working on a file in multiple weeks. You don't, re you don't remember what you're doing. I was actually putting the clothing um, in this layer, but... That's all right. I'm going to do a little fill here. Okay, now I think I'll put this little gem, gemstone. What color will we have that be? Hmm, let me think about that for a minute. The first thing I got to do is I got to go back to my magic wand and start selecting these facets within the gem. Okay. Okay, so let's expand that selection, modify, expand two pixels, 
there we go we got a clean selection for the most part and we're going to drop a color in there and how about a deep purple let's see what that looks like hmm let's save that selection because that was a pain let's call that gem going to drop that and we're going to go in and clean up some of these lines again now how does that look next to that here's what we're going to do we're going to go back to the hue saturation palette and that's control u to bring that up and we're just going to slide that that hue slider around and see hmm making it connect to something already in the design doesn't feel bad now that's a little bit too ooey wooey red I don't know how I feel about that. Not bad though. But if I bring it into that turquoise realm, it does connect with the face. So maybe that's what we'll do. That works for me. Okay, let's leave it there. Okay, so those are my flats right there. You know, right now, I think I wanna drop some, some value back here. And the reason why is because it's getting a little hard to really judge the color. So let's drop a little bit of value back there. Maybe we'll make that a little darker. I'm going to grab this entire thing and I'm gonna throw this into a folder. And that way, oh, I'm gonna copy this. Well, you know what, there wasn't reason to do that. Let me just leave it like that leave it as is and what's next let's 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 try painting a little bit how about that let's see how these brushes are for painting All right, I'm gonna to start to I'm gonna to start to add in a little value. Now, what I like to do when I like to paint, I like to turn my opacity down to about 80 to 85, my flow down to about 50 to 55, and I'm gonna look in here and see if I can grab some cool painting brushes. Okay. I'm going to drop in some value. Okay, here we go.
I'm just dropping it. I'm making some notes for myself, just dropping in, you know, a little value where I think it should be. Okay. Just dropping in the darks. I want my light to be coming from from this direction. So I'm trying to make notes for myself. Okay. Okay, so we're just making some notes here. We're saying shadow, 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 boom, boom, boom. Now, the way that I paint when I'm painting digitally is I paint sort of um, dark to light, kind of like oil painting. That's, that's sort of the oil painting process. Um, so I'm not gonna be adding any lights just yet, but I am making notes for myself. Now, one thing I will do is I'm gonna cool down this light area, because that's pretty warm, because I just grabbed it directly off of the skin and I darkened it. So what I want to do is I want to cool that down. And so I'm going to go, I don't want to change the overall color, but I do want to add some coolness into that color. So I'm going to pick up the color balance, uh, open up the color balance palette and you get that by hitting control B. And so I'm just going to add a little cyan and a little bit of blue to kind of cool down that whole area. There we go. You see how much of a difference that makes? Let's look at that. You see how warm that is? Now, you, the, the rule is warm light, cool shadows, cool light, warm shadows. So that's the overall rule. That's one of the first things that I learned in my very first color theory class, and it still applies to this very day, because um, this is sort of like a law of physics. Um, But if I go into, let's go back to my history palette, because somehow I lost where I was, and I go to the color balance change, and boom, cools everything down, gives it some three-dimensionality, and just three-dimensionality, and just makes it pop. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go and I'm going to download the brushes that I like to paint with. This is my own brush set, and I'm going to add that here. So I'll be right back, and when I come back, uh, we will get to painting.
All right, we're back, guys. Um, and I feel like this is a little out of sync, but hey. So <laughs> we are back. Um, I've downloaded my brushes, and these are the brushes that I like to paint with. 
and we're going to take that over to um, to where we're at, and we're going to keep painting here. So here we go. All right, so I just blocked in really quickly um, some of my shadow area. And I'm going to go in here and we're going to use, I think this is on the mixer brush. Is that what that is? Let's, let me get a regular brush going here. What is going on here? Here we go. I don't want the mixer brush. I want a normal brush. <sighs> All right, looks like we're having some technical difficulties, so I'm gonna come right back after I figure out what's wrong. We had a little te technical difficulty that I needed to, to figure out, but we are back in business. And so now we're gonna get into doing some painting. So I'm gonna go on top of this layer here with, uh, I like this skin brush here. I like to use that to paint with a lot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. Um, now, I like to paint underneath my line in the beginning to kind of get some of that initial value down. And then um, as, I, as I move along and I start modeling a little bit and I get a little bit more um, information down, then I'll come on top of the line and start to 
start to get rid of the lines. Or, you know, I mean, I could I could leave it just like this as well. So it just, just depends on what I want to do. It depends on how fast I need to go too. If I, if I am in a hurry, like I'm working in the studio and I need to bang something out by the end of the day, you know, there's not a whole lot of time to try and render and be cute. Sounds good and looks good, but you'd be surprised how much of concept art is not very um, sexy. You know, you're not always doing super nice portfolio quality work because a lot of times you're just trying to meet a deadline. And you know, the studios, that's they don't care about portfolio quality work. I know sometimes you get thrown off because you see all the beautiful artwork in the art of books for these different games and movies, but that's, you know, a very small amount of what actually happens in terms of the production for the game. Um, it's actually refreshing when I see like, um, art of books that have real serious, like hardcore artwork um, that uh, that they're actually doing um, in game or they're not in game, but they're using it, um, the actual concept art as opposed to just splashy marketing artwork and things like that. You'd be surprised how many people um, think that what they're looking at is fancy schmancy marketing artwork when in reality it's, um, when in reality, it's just um, or, or they think they're looking at concept art when it's just marketing artwork. So, all right, so we are having a little freeze here for some odd reason. All right, it looks like we got a little freeze here in Photoshop, which is not, now this is the downside of technology. When stuff like this starts happening, this is where um, technology can be a little frustrating, but you know, that's not something that we can't fix. So we're just gonna go ahead and take a quick break. We'll come right back um, and we'll try and get this figured out and maybe we'll paint, and maybe we'll just do another drawing. All right, we're back. I think we got it worked out this time, so we're gonna try and keep going with painting so long as Photoshop cooperates. So yeah, if you guys are wondering what I'm using, I am using Adobe Photoshop um, 
and I am working on a Wack Wacom Cintiq. Right. Now, I believe the proper way to say it is Wacom because it's a Japanese word. Um, I was told this by oh, a very nice Wacom representative, but it just sounds so bizarre to say Wacom. So I would always say Wacom. Now, it's up to you. People know what it is, but this is a great, um, a really great uh, screen to draw on. This is, I started using these back in the days. Um, I was working at Lucasfilm and um, I walked in and they had one of these on the desk and I never really used one before, wasn't familiar with it and I kind of didn't want to use it. And so, you know, I said, hey, can I, um, can I just draw on paper? And they said, oh, no, you know, George wants everything to be paperless. And so um, I just kind of forced myself to use it. I drew on paper as much as I could, and then there were times where it was really just more expedient to use, um, to use the Cintiq. And before you know it, it, it had so many advantages, being able to draw directly onto the screen. Um, that I kind of fell in love with it. And one day I came home um, with a brand new Wacom Cintiq. Um, and when I told my wife how much it had cost at the time, she wasn't terribly happy about that. But you know what? Uh, an artist must have their tools. And this has been um, my one and only drawing uh, or painting tablet for the last 10 years. I love it. It's, it's been fantastic. And these new ones, the fidelity um, and the responsiveness of the pens are amazing. So really cool. I strongly recommend that if you're serious about concept art and you really want to have tools that the pros use, you got to get a Wacom Cintiq. So this is a, just, a, a, just a beautiful machine. And I had the old school ones, which was the gray ones. And, and those, those still were very, very good, but these are even better. Um, so again, strongly recommend um, these products because of how how um, amazing they are at capturing sort of what you're doing. It's it's really you know it's really just super nice to be able to just move all over the canvas. Now here's the one here's the one thing that people don't understand when you're painting digitally, okay? Um, you know people you know have you know, when, when they're ignorant of what digital painting is like, they like to make little comments like, oh, this is kind of like cheating, you know, because it's digital, it's not real oil. You know, you ask like a, like an old school classical sort of oil painter and they feel, you know, they'll have very strong opinions like that. But what they don't realize often is that the same principles that you use when you're, when you're painting uh, the same principles that you use when you're painting your, um, you know, your, your figures or uh, in oil on canvas are the same principles that you're going to be using, um, uh, you know, when you're painting digitally. If you're a terrible painter on canvas, you're not going to automatically be a great painter digitally. It doesn't work that way. So that's, that's a, a huge misunderstanding that people have when, um, when they begin to uh, learn about digital painting is they think that somehow you're, you're, you know, you're taking a shortcut and really that's not how it works at all. If you stink at painting, you're not gonna wake up and be a miraculously amazing digital painter. It just, it just doesn't work out that way. So um, the same principles that apply when painting traditionally will apply when painting digitally as well. So hate to burst the bubble of the condescending, condescending snooty folks, but you know, it's, it's the truth, you know? Um, and even if you are a great painter, I, I will say this, if you're a great painter in oil, you will pick up digital uh, fairly quickly. Um, but it doesn't mean that you're going to automatically be amazing because there's a learning curve, you know. So, you know, anybody who turns their nose up at a painting that is done digitally is frankly probably just ignorant and doesn't understand how challenging it is 
to paint um, digitally. And that's, you know, you're going to experience that a lot in life. A lot of people don't understand what you, I mean, some people would look at something like this and say, you know, this is not real art. I literally had a fine artist um, tell a friend of mine um, that what they did wasn't real art because it wasn't, you know, this highbrow fine art stuff that they did. And I, I just think that's super arrogant and, and to be quite frank, very disrespectful because, you know, we, we really, we really work on our craft and our skills just as hard as anybody, you know? And, um, and so to turn your nose up at somebody's artwork simply because it isn't what you do is frankly kind of dumb. Uh, I mean, it goes back to the age old arguments when you used to have, you know, fight artist painters sort of looking down upon, you know, illustrators like, and these were amazing illustrators like Charles Dana Gibson and, you know, NCYF and people like that, almost as if they weren't, you know, real artists because they weren't doing um, these classical oil paintings and things like that. But in reality, they were amazing artists and amazing painters. They were just doing uh, art for a different purpose. Commercial art is it, um, is it in and of itself of a lower quality or, you know, is it for people who are intellectually inferior? It's just a different approach. Okay, so we're, we're now going on top of the lines and we're starting to get rid of some of the line work. I'm gonna go in and actually, um, I'm gonna go in and actually group these, I'm gonna group these um, values here. Now I'm gonna go in and add some dark dark into the figure. I wanna set the bottom end of my value scale. Okay, so. All right, so I'm bringing that in there. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Let's go in and add some uh, some dark darks. All right, so now I'm sort of framing. For now, I'm going to keep um, these lines real visible in the braid just so I can go back and paint that later. But, but the rest of the hair, I can kind of block that in as like one shape. Okay, and let's get those nostrils in there, all right. 
Okay, great. So we're, we're, we're moving at a good clip here. I've got some, some of those dark darks in there. I'm going to add a little bit more value here. I'm going to take a, a real nice dark, dark, dark there in the lips just to model out those lips a little bit. Doesn't look like much now, but um, when I really start to um, when I really start to add some of these lights and pop some of these lights out, you'll really start to kind of see it. Um, one of the other things I like to do is um, I like to save in iterations often. That's super important. Um, because you never know, like, you know, I have students all the time come to me and say, oh, my file got corrupted. And I'll tell them, did you save in iterations? And they'll say, no. You know, and that's heartbreaking because I know how hard it is to paint something, come a really long way, and then have your computer crash on you. So you always want to try and avoid that if at all possible. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is, in that spirit, I'm going to do a save as, and um, I'm going to rename this because this is the 16th, okay? And so that'll be that. And I'm constantly saving, I'm constantly hitting Command S, Command S, Command S, because... Um, You never know. You never know when the computer is going to decide to do a hard freeze and you're going to have to start over and you're going to lose a bunch of work. And that's soul crushing, so don't do that. So let's go in and get a little bit of that eye. Drop that in there. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. There we go. That's coming along. That's looking real good. Let's, yeah, we're just kind of seeing what we're doing here.
All right, we're, we're styling. I'm just sitting here modeling and trying to get some lighting down. Okay, so I think that's looking really good. And now I think we're about ready to start adding some lighter values in here. Okay, so I'm just kind of looking at this and thinking about where exactly I want to add these lighter values. Let's go out, click on and off, okay. All right, so, all right, we're gonna get onto another layer here, and I am going to, grab a lighter value. I think that might be a little bit too yellow, hmm. Maybe, maybe. Um, let's let's cool this down. Just or let's give it a little bit more red. Give it a little bit more red. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna block in where I usually see light hitting. Yeah, your light usually hits right there. That's one thing when you're painting from without reference, it's it's always a challenge. Okay, so we're looking real good. Let's see. All right, let's get some light in the neck. Okay. A little bit right there. Boom. Boom. Okay. Knock that back a little bit. That's a little bit too light. Just want to keep the right balance. And 
the shadow area. All right. Okay, so, um, now I'm going to really go in and add some, some light light got to be real careful about adding some of these highlights. The thing about painting dark skin is it's always a challenge because um, dark skin has a much more narrow value range and much more narrow color range. So it's always uh, a little tricky dropping in highlights because it's not quite as easy as when you're doing lighter skin. Lighter skin super easy. I wouldn't say super easy, but it's easier. So we're, we're moving right along, we're styling. Let me get a little bit bolder with that highlight area. Right? Why not, let's check that out, let's see how that looks. Oh, he's coming to life, isn't he? Hmm. Okay, let's uh, let's go back here. I should have put that highlight on another layer, but you know what? I forgot. So <laughs> sometimes that happens, right? Okay, we are moving right along. We're having some some fun here. No, I'm gonna change the value of that um, tattoo in just a second. Um, so I'm gonna pick that, I'm gonna drop that onto another color. I'm going to brighten that up. Actually, I shouldn't have painted that light first. Let me paint this, this darker value out first, cool that down a little bit. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, let's add a little bit more that dark value on the underside of that lip. Get that right. 
Yeah, see here we're cooking. Now let's get some of that light. Let's cool that down a little. Actually, let's warm that up. Yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Okay, let's. Let's go on top. I'm gonna um, just kind of clean up. Copy that clean line layer and just throw it on top of the here so I can so I can see what I've done. Okay, so at this point, um, I think I want to come in and add some super duper highlights. Not just any highlights, but super duper highlights. back a couple of those highlights because that's a little bit too strong. Let me turn down the flow and opacity and get a nice soft brush. Okay, let's see. I'm going to thin out those eyebrows too just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Style them up a little bit. Why not, right? How about we paint that little nose ring there? Uh-huh. There we go. Add a little highlight there. Add some highlights in the lip. And I'm going to add a little bit I'm going to add a little bit of value 
maybe some reds just so the face is not so monochromatic. So that really just kind of brings some life into the face. Because when it's monochromatic, like, it just looks a little dull. So just by adding a little bit of that red in there, it really makes a big difference. Let's see, have I been a little heavy handed with that red? What if I turn it down just a little smidge? Okay, we're, we're doing pretty good here. And here, I want a little blue. So let's grab my darkest dark and let's add some blue to that. Okay, we are, ooh, we are styling. Okay, now I'm gonna actually, um, I'm gonna go back to this, and I'm gonna put in like a little, nice attention-grabbing highlight just in a couple spots. Just a little specular. That's actually a little bit too white. You don't ever want to add white, white to your painting. Cause it, look, it looks weird. So I'm just trying to, trying to create a little bit of a highlight. All right, so we're just, just jamming right along. And uh, let's save that. Ah, let's beef up that shadow underneath the nose a little bit.
okay, so I'm going to take a different brush, um, one that has a texture that's a little bit like hair. And I'm going to add a little hair texture to this. I'm just trying to add a little hair texture. I'm not sure that I'm liking that brush too much, but but it's giving me a it's giving me a little bit of a texture there. That's nice. You know what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to blow this up uh, a lot bigger so that I can get a little bit more. Okay, let's blow that up. All right. Are we good there? Yeah, that's good. Now we can get a little bit more detail with my fairy hairbrush. See, sometimes the brushes work um, better uh, when the canvas is larger or the subject is larger. So that's something that you always want to pay attention to. Um, just to make sure, you know, that you're getting the most out of your brushes. Because sometimes people think, you know, I can't paint. This is really hard. This is not my thing. Sometimes your canvas is just too small, you know. So, working on some of this braid here. And so far, we've really done sort of a good job of like bringing it to life. Um, I got to darken up that one side though. Yeah, adding all that texture to the hair has really made a big difference already. Okay, so I'm gonna um, go back to the brush that I was using prior to that. <clears throat> cool that down. So that makes a little bit more sense. Ooh, I like that stroke. Gonna keep that stroke. 
smooth out that stroke. Island. Yeah. Just having fun here, guys. That's what we're doing, right? If you're not having fun when you're doing art, you're doing it wrong. Um, right? And remember, you know, this is something that people all over the world dream about doing, but may never have the opportunity for whatever reason. Maybe they didn't, you know, have the. Um, financial means or they weren't in the right area or you know maybe they didn't have the courage to take that leap and go and pursue something that they really wanted to do um, so if you're doing art for a living man you're in good shape so you should always remember that during the tough times because you should be having fun you know could be doing a lot of other things with your life but instead you're doing art and art is dope Okay, so what, what, what am I trying to do here? I don't know. Let's bring that to a point. Let's put a little highlight in that light area in the lips. funny let's save right always a reminder to save because we don't want to lose any of that progress you know I'm gonna bring back in that hairbrush that I was using maybe I'll bring in this one here and I'm gonna actually grab the skin where's that hair I'm gonna go on top of that Trying to make that shape look a little bit more organic. There we go. All right, let's go back to my other brush. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, that looks a little better. It looks a little bit more believable. <coughs> and I want to darken that up right there. So let's see where we're at. Let's go here. And let's take a look. That's what we started with. And here we are. We started here, and we're here. We started here, and we're here. And hey, that's not bad, right? Um, but just remember, I mean, sometimes that, that you know, that um, line drawing is gonna have to suffice if that's all that you have time for. So you gotta be able to gauge your time wisely. Okay, you know what, I wanna paint a little bit of this headdress here, so I'm gonna drop another folder here. I'm gonna smooth that out a little bit. Okay, so we kind of worked that out there. Just kind of smooth that out. Now I'm gonna go on the bottom side of this. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna let's darken that up. Okay. <clears throat> and um, I'll come back and Tweak that just a little bit more in a second. So I wanna Ah, there we go. Now that's looking a little bit better, right? More believable, because this is what we had before, and that wasn't quite coherent with the rest of the face. So, of course, that means we're gonna have to paint the leaves. Now, we're going on uh, about 15 minutes left, so I'm gonna try and jam through this and get this done as quickly as possible, but we may not finish, and that's okay, because we can always come back. So, let's get to the light part of this headband. Let's start adding some of these lighter lights in. How about we go here? I, whenever I add light, I always like to add a little yellow into. That's, that might be a little bit too light. So here, it's, you know, it's gonna be monochromatic. So let's see, let's go boom. And maybe we add just a smidge. There we go. Here, let's jump on another layer for that. There we go. Boom. 
boom, boom, boom. Okay, we're in business. Uh, all right, now let's grab some of that blue. Let's go lighter, maybe a li little warmer. Now we're gonna model that in together with that. Okay, now on this other side, we're gonna be turning away from the light, so. Get a little darker here and here. And here, we're gonna actually cool that down a little bit. And maybe we. Yeah. See, you see how that's turning the form a little bit? You know, so it feels like it's wrapping, right? That's what we want. So that means I'm gonna darken that up just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Just to get that form to kind of turn a little bit more. Okay, now um, let's save that. Let's check it again. Big difference. Big, 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 big difference. Okay, let's, uh, let's see how quickly I can paint some leaves. So we're going to actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kind of darken this whole leaf up. Okay, now let's go and let's grab a slightly lighter color. You want the leaves to feel very organic and mottled. Now for this darkest dark, I'm gonna actually add some blue into that green and then darken that up. And we're gonna go.
That's a little bit too blue. So let's, let's see, let's add a touch of green to that. Not that much green. Let's put the difference. Okay, but now we are in a hurry, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that clean line, I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna bring that all the way up to, where are we at, right here, and I am going to cut everything except for the leaves out. Okay, so I, I did that in the interest of time because um, I don't have time to sit here and model these leaves perfectly. Um, but I am going to add a little light to this, these leaves. So let's, let's grab a little bit of a lighter color, touch of yellow, and let's drop that in there. Actually, maybe I should do this on top of the line. Yeah. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. See, I'm letting the line do some of the work for me because I am pressed for time. So, do that work, line. Do that work. Okay, and now on another layer, I'm going to just kind of brush over the lighter parts. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, we're, we're in business. Okay, you know what, this could use a little touch of yellow, couldn't it? Uh-huh. Let's, let's grab that color there. Let's push that towards yellow. And let's throw that on another layer. And let's see what happens. Ooh, mm, mm, mm. Me gusta. Prefiero pintar cuando no estoy usando solo un color. Yo me gusta cuando mis colores son mezclados. Verde, amarillo, junto. Sorry, I went to Spanish mode. Um, yes, yes, yes. This is looking much, much more lifelike with a little yellow in there. I like using these colors together, yellow, green, just adding a little life. Cause that's really what, you know, when we talk about doing things organic, I mean, if you're looking at things in nature, things aren't really monochromatic. If you really look at them closely, you know, there's lots of different, you know, lots of different colors.
All right, we are doing really well here. I'm going to just add a couple little touches, like uh, maybe go even more yellow, right? Okay, and I like it. I like it a lot. Did I really just do that? Yes, I did. You know why? Because according to people that I've talked to, I'm a bit of a dork. And that's okay. I'll wear that label proudly. Um, okay, let's go back to where my colors were before I started doing the plants. Because that's all. Okay, so the plants. That's from here to here. Let me group that, call that plants. That's a rush job, but it's not bad. Okay, and right underneath these colors here, I'm gonna throw a layer and I'm gonna paint. There we go. We need a little bit of hair. Okay, so, so here's what we did today. We did a little review. Um, we did a little review of our piece here. And I kind of walked you guys through how I started. Um, when I started this a few weeks ago, I just started with the head. I didn't have, you know, any real idea as far as what I was doing. I just thought, I'm gonna sketch. I'm gonna make a bunch of cool heads, make something really interesting, and just have fun. But as I was drawing the head, I got really inspired, and I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll make a character. And as I started drawing the body, um, I started thinking of a story for the character. I'm gonna make something, you know, maybe a, a futuristic, sci-fi, post-apocalyptic warrior type. And so I started putting on the armor and sketching ideas for the costume on top of that. Once I got that all figured out, I began to go in and I cleaned it up, cleaned the lineup. As you can see here, there's a clean line drawing there. And then after that, once I got that all down, I began to lay in my flats. That was sort of last week. This week, I did a little review. I finished up my flats, and then I decided to go in and start painting. So I downloaded my brushes, and after a few technical difficulties, because that's what happens when you're using the digital medium, sometimes it's awesome because there's so many things you can do in it so fast, but there's always those little technical difficulties that you run into. That's why you always want to make sure you save, save, save right so after that I went in and as you can see you know I really um, began to I, I just figured my light source was gonna come here from the right and then um, I used that to sort of paint my figure and just kind of make it look believable and you can see the difference um, between what I started with which was this and where was that now I could totally keep painting this you know, for a very long time, um, I could probably pull up some reference and make it even better in terms of like what's actually happening. But for a quick concept painting, not bad. And, um, you know, as you, as you can see, I spent probably a good hour just painting the head. But, um, and the rest of the body is 
painfully neglected. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll come back to it at a later date. But for now, I think we're just gonna let this one live as is. And I think it's really cool. I think it really came along. Maybe I'll paint this gemstone at some point, make it shine and throw some ambient light onto this skin, which would be really cool. Definitely want to paint that skull. Um, so I'm going to come back to this. Um, we're not done here. We're not done. Now, when I'm going to come back to it, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it next week or in a later stream. Um, but what I think is going to happen is we're going to get back to hella drawing. So the next time I come on here, we're going to start drawing again and just sketching and see what we come up with. Maybe I'll try to come with a few design briefs because, like I said, story drives design. So we're going to have fun. Hopefully you guys had fun watching me work on this character and bring it from all the way from just a little head sketch all the way to where we're at now. And hopefully we can keep coming uh, together and doing some really cool stuff. If you guys ever have any ideas, feel free to pop onto the stream, pop onto the chat, and throw ideas and suggestions at me. And if you see me around, throw some ideas and suggestions at me um, that I could maybe use for a future stream. I'd love to hear from you guys. Anyways, you guys take care. Hope you guys had fun. This is Michael Buffington, Hella Drawing. I'm out. Peace.